Hey everyone, it's Adam. Today I'm gonna to talk about the multi-view switcher feature in MixFX 1.7.0. That's only available if you're running iOS 16.1 or higher. Let's get started. Here we have my ATEM. I'm gonna demonstrate this on three ATEMs, the ATEM Mini Extreme ISO, the ATEM 2ME Constellation HD, and the ATEM 4ME Broadcast Studio 4K. This is the A10 Mini Extreme ISO. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new switcher page and I'm gonna call the multi-view switcher. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete all my panels. I don't need them. And let's go add some new panels. So there's three layouts with a switcher page. Small, which is what you see when you're running on an iPhone or if your iPad's in slide over or the narrow split view. We also have medium, which is for smaller iPads, with smaller screen sizes. And we have the large, which is for the larger iPads. So the first panel we're gonna add is the multi-view switcher. Uh, in this case, we only have multi-view switcher one because the ATEM Mini Extreme ISO only has one multi-view. But if you have an ATEM that has multiple multi-views, you will see multi-view switcher one, two, three, or four. For the left panel, we're gonna add next transition and the downstream keyers. And for the right panel, we're gonna add the transition style. See if I can get to that. Sorry, let's try that. Transition style, and we'll put in the fader bar. Then we tap close, and there you go. We have the multi-view switcher. Now, you can configure the multi-view switcher in a couple ways. If you go to user interface, you can optionally have uh, perform auto transition on tap, okay? So I'm gonna uh, turn that off. And let's see what happens when I tap. It does a cut. If I do a double tap, it will do an auto transition. But you can swap that if you like auto transition on tap. If you want to change your preview source, all you have to do is tap on it. So I can tap on the iPhone right here or the Mac mini right here. And it will show the preview uh, of an image here. And I'll show you how you can actually get preview images in a second. So let's go back to the 5D Mark IV like this. And the reason why the 5D Mark IV has a red border around it is because it's also being used as the upstream keyer. So if I turn the upstream keyer off by tapping the on air button, you'll see that the 5D Mark IV turns green, which means it's in preview. When I turn on the on, uh, the on air for the upstream keyer number one, you'll see that here I am right there in the upper right corner. With stills, you can use your finger to swipe. So I can swipe left or right and it will change um, the still images accordingly, okay? And with SuperSource, you can right click and you can do, choose your SuperSource previews like that, okay? And I don't have SuperSource on uh, program or preview, so you just see it animating within this uh, view here. And we also have the master audio that you can see here and you can turn on video follows audio if you have those configured for your audio sources. Now to change what your multi-view sees, you would go into your switcher settings, which is down here, and choose multi-view. And then you see I've selected this one here, but if I wanted to change it, I could change it to say this one over here, go back to the switcher, and you'll see that the multi-view switcher has, has changed um, in mix effect. So I'm gonna go back to the other multi-view that I like, which is this one right here, and I'll go back to here, okay? So that's how you configure the multi-view switcher on an ATEM Mini Extreme. Now, if you have something like an ATEM 2ME Constellation HD, you'll have multiple multi-views. So we can go down here to the multi-view switcher, and you see I have uh, one of the multi-view switchers here. So let's take a look actually at putting in the second multi-view switcher. So this one is actually multi-view switcher one. So I'm gonna put in multi-view switcher Find it, multi-view switcher number one, and we have one and two. So I'm gonna put one on top um, and two there. I'm gonna hit done and close. And you see now we have two multi-views representing the two multi-views on the constellation. And I can go again into settings, multi-view, and I can change which ones, uh, what appears where. So let's just put this one like that. And then multi-view number two, I'm gonna to go to say this one here. Okay, and you have the ability to show, uh, toggle on and off the audio channels right here. You can just do like that. And then we can go back to the switcher and we see our multi-view has changed according to what I did. 
Now, let's take a look at how we can configure the source images. So how was I able to get like an iPhone picture, a HyperDeck, um, a, looks like a, is that a web presenter and a camera, and another HyperDeck in those inputs. So what you can do is you can go to the switcher uh, connection details page, and you'll see down here at the bottom source images, if there's source images available. And you see what inputs they correspond to one, two, three, four, and five. I can go tap edit and scroll down and we see source images is basically a new line delimited string of text. So we have the input number followed by a colon, followed by a URL, HTTPS URL to an image on the internet. So in this case, we have an iOS device. We have a pocket cinema 4k on input two. We have a HyperDeck studio HD mini on three and we have a uh, HD studio plus on four, not a web presenter and a HyperDeck studio HD pro on input five. You can also specify a color, uh, a hex value uh, in between the number input number and the colon. So if I wanted to do say like this, let's try like that. And I could say save, you'll see that now that iPhone has a background color to it. And you'll see now that the image is like this. So you want to use probably transparent PNGs, and then you can assign a color uh, as the background. I also have a GitHub repo for a bunch of source images related to various Blackmagic products from their switchers, web presenters, HyperDex, and cameras. Uh, and I'll put a link in the video below. Now let's take a look at the 4ME Broadcast Studio 4K. So I'm connecting to that and you'll see I have multi-view switcher. Um, I have one and I have two right here. So we go to settings. Um, oh, turns out the 4ME only has two multi-views, not four of them. I think the Constellation 8K has four multi-views. And this one is far less configurable than the Constellation HD or the A10 Mini Extreme ISO. You get a far more limited number of kind of multi-view uh, layouts um, instead of the like the 16 that you get with the other switchers. But you do have the ability to see all of them. And you can see I've assigned various source images to these here. So we go look at the switcher connection. We see all the inputs. And we see down here how I've uh, specified them like that. Now you can also write a shortcut to automate this. So if you have a, a bunch of switchers and you just want to kind of like play around with source images because you're constantly changing your inputs, you could run the shortcut, which is the set source images action to add images to any of your switcher connections. I'm going to go back to the ATEM Mini Extreme ISO, and back to the multi-view switcher. And there you go. Uh, other things you can do within the media player is you can right click to select your still so you don't have to do the swipe. Uh, for the program and preview, you can adjust the audio here, volume up, volume down, turn on audio follows video, mute the audio or reset the settings. Same thing with uh, image uh, input sources. You have audio, solo, if you have that ability, on off AFV, volume up, volume down and reset. And if you have they, the multi-view set to show you your streaming settings or your recording settings. I will show you that right now. We can go here. You'll see some information about the record or the stream. I happen to be recording right now. So I show you drive one and drives two. Uh, there's no disc in drive one. And I have 20 hours remaining on drive one. And I've been recording for nine minutes. But that's all you need to know about how to use the new multi-view switcher feature in MixEffect 1.7.0. Hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll have more videos detailing other features in MixEffect later. Thanks. Bye-bye.